Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Life of Pre. I know it's been a whole weekend and a day since my last video, but hey, even I get breaks. The only thing you missed was a crazy t d session, but hey, future videos, right? I promise I will introduce you all to my campaign players. I am currently the DM, um, which has been a lot of fun. Stressful, but fun. Anyway, today is exciting because I have a meeting with some representatives from HM Claus. It is a vegetable seed company under the parent company in France called Lima Green. And I'm really looking forward to it because they're a potential future hire and I get to pick their brains about what they're looking for, how does the industry work, and what else can I do to really sell myself and prepare myself to enter the industry in the plant breeding world. So, yeah. Okay, so I just finished my lunch meeting and it went really, really well. It was enjoyable. I learned a lot about the company. They might have a position opening up in July and so they'll contact me when it does. Um, so yeah, it was, it was great. We went to Crateville in downtown and delicious. It finally opened back up again. It was shut down for most of the pandemic. And yeah, now I'm just walking back to lab with my bike. I decided to walk because it's another beautiful, gorgeous day in Davis, California, and why not? Okay, so before we begin in the lab today, we're going to have another quick genetics lesson. Earlier, we did a PCR, and it used what we call a DCAPS marker. And the C here stands for cleaved. So if you remember, we wanted to figure out, okay, does our DNA fragment have the A or B allele here? And in order to determine this, we used an enzyme to cleave it or to cut it. And if it got cut, then it was an A. And if it didn't get cut, then it was a B. Now, what am I doing today? Well, I am doing a CASP PCR. And this is a little different and it's nicer because I don't have to run any gels. I don't have to, have to do a digestion. So how does it work? Well, you have your DNA fragment and you want to know, right, is this A or B? Instead of creating a forward and reverse primer, like we did here, we're going to create two forward primers, a forward A and a forward B, and one reverse primer. Then with the forward A and the forward B, we're going to add tails. So the forward A will only connect to those that have the A. The forward B will only connect to those that have the B. And by using a tail, one is called FAM and the other is called VIC, we can make these DNA fragments fluorescence in our Omega machine. And so those that have the A primer will glow blue, let's say, and those that have the B for primer will glow red. Then the Omega machine gives us a nice readout where anything that is blue goes over here in this corner. Anything that's more red goes over here and anything that has both is a mix of colors goes in the middle here. So we know this is our A's, these are our B's, and this is our hex. And so yeah, I'll be doing a CASP marker today. And here we are with our three primers. The FAM, which will be used for the A allele, the VIC, which is used for the B allele, and the common primer here, which is our reverse primer used for both. I mixed the three together to make our CASP assay, which is here. This marker is 182.8 and I mix it with water and the CASP mix assay, which is here. And that contains the luminescent dyes and it needs to be in a dark tube because it is light sensitive. Due to this, we also use a white plate like this one. And as you can tell, it's a lot larger than the other plate because I have four DNA plates that I need to do today, all on the same marker. So we put it in one PCR plate to save time and resources. There is a total of 384 wells in the PCR plate, and so we split it into four quadrants to make it simpler. Every well will have the same 182.8 master mix, and our quadrants are A1, A2, B1, and B2, and each one will have a different plate, 26, 27, 28, 29. You then take the little square I had, which can be found up here in the upper left corner, a1, A2, B1, B2, and extend it across the entire plate for, to make your quadrants. And once the master mix is put in, it is time to add the DNA. You need to be extremely careful here, right? That you don't 
put your DNA into the wrong quadrant. So I'm starting with A1 and then I go to A3, A5, and that's all quadrant one. And I will start with the second one because I've already done one and I go in, grab my DNA. And if you see someone in the lab doing a 384 PCR, do not interrupt them. Let them finish this because it is complex and annoying if you contaminate it. Now that the PCRs are in, it's time for me to do one of my assignments around the lab, which is to collect all of the hazardous waste from the DNA extractions. It's not hard, but it can add up pretty quickly. Okay, I am now heading out. The cask or pace is still running and it won't be ready for like an hour and a half. And I have other stuff to get done this evening. So those results will have to wait until tomorrow. With that, I all hope you have a wonderful Tuesday. Peace out.